Okay. Okay, little buddy. Don't you, um, I mean, you gotta believe, you gotta be convinced now that, uh, your legs are much better. Okay? Got, got to. Alright. Um, I don't know who shot Nick's, Nick's camera's probably a little bit too far left, because I know he'd like to see a little bit of the left arm. But, uh, for the most part, I just really want you to watch Nick's P2. Look how good that is. See, he's starting off with that good, that good um, flying wedge. So he's cocking the wrist up as the hands work inside. I mean, that's his, that's the best two in golf right there, man. And then what do you do? You take it right under plane. Okay, and that's just too much left arm rotation and not enough vertical wrist cock. Or uh, number two, accumulator. Not enough. Okay? So, you really need to feel like that club face is pointing to the ball all the way to two. Alright, so now that I got you two, I'm going to take you to three. Three's good. I think you're probably going to see that your three and next three are real close. No, not that close. All right, so you're you're entirely too deep. See your hands right here, and that's because so you've got to make up you got to make up some ground. Um, I don't know if you've seen. I've got also got Mike Bennett, but my shaft is perfectly parallel right there. And it's not a huge deal. It's more about it's more about the club face than it is anything else. But look how notice how we can see a little bit of, of Nick's Nick's elbow right there and we can't see any of yours. His hands are more they're up his they're a little bit further up his upper arm than yours are. So if you'll uh if you'll get that number two and that's that's probably the first thing that I would uh, focus on because that's easy. That's something you can do. You don't even have to have to have a golf ball. You don't have to even hit balls. Just, you need a mirror, really. Alright, so there's your four, your top. Alright, so you're actually pretty good right here. You, you turn your shoulders to 115 degrees, dude. You don't need but about 90 degrees. See, all of this is unnecessary. Shorten that thing up right there. It's not a bad position. If that's what you're into. Okay, so look at that. I mean, there's next three, not much further. So he's got his shoulders turning. When he gets to three, his shoulders are probably 80 degrees. So he just turns them a little bit more. And see, this is the beauty. This is the, you know, stack and tilt doesn't get enough credit, I don't think, for being simple. It's just, it's simple. Everybody thinks it's complicated, but it's not. Look at his, look at his club face. That matches his left arm and his shoulders. And everything's, all the lines are parallel and perpendicular. The club face is always perpendicular to the plane and path, or to the path. Okay, so club face so much better. Your club face used to be, your club face used to match this yellow line here. So much better. Alright, so now I'm just going to draw your top slot line there. So look how shallow narrow your slot line is and look how wide Nix is so that gives him a little bit more room so here's his five which is real close that red line right here is his three and his shaft almost comes right through it alright and you have to reach a little bit more alright so here's your five really close so you got you've got dude you're, you're real close real close I'm gonna send this to Nick too and see what he thinks he'll probably say my analysis is all wrong you blithering idiot all right so here's six this is the arguably one of the most important positions right here because this is where you deliver this is the delivery position and if you look at Nick's arms his left arm 
and this forearm. That right forearm is typically, with the good players, is going to be parallel to the original shaft plane. The club face is going to be real close to matching his spine angle. Okay, and now he'll just cover it. His elbow and his hips are going to work pretty much together. So his right arm doesn't straighten out too soon. Actually straightens out just about right there. And I'm going to clean these lines up in a minute. And uh, let's see how his hips and his arms work together right there. Everything's turning together. Now, I'm doing this slow. At, at speed, there's going to be some lag in there. That club head's going to lag behind. So I'm going to stop you at six. Right, so you're at five. So here's your six. Look how far, look how far back your club is behind you back there. That's why the delivery position is so important. Man, you've got to catch up. You, there's no way you, you, you have to flip the club through to square it up. You have no chance. Now look here. Look how your butt's falling off. Your ass just fell off right there because you lost your posture. Posture. All right. See, this is where you're, this is the point where you're trying to tuck those hips under and kind of the right field. Not terrible, but see how you've gotten straight? Look at this. You've lost your spine angle and watch Nick. See, he's still. Now I'm going to go back to Nick's, uh, setup. Alright. Now watch this. I'm going to go Alright, so there's Nick's impact, which is P7 Address Impact. Look at that spine angle. That never changes. Look at that. It goes right through his ear. Right through his ear. That's consistency right there, my friend. All right, so let's look at let's look at you. I'm gonna clear up some of these all these these lines. Okay, so we gotta get you get your spine angle, get you bent over just a little bit more, a little bit more bend from the hips. Okay. Oh, here's your P7. All right, so boom, 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 boom. That's what you were doing tonight, huh? Or you wish you were doing tonight. <laughs> feel like if you could get those hips tucked under you then they'll rotate and you'll be able to keep your spine angle or your secondary tilt if you will okay so hopefully I don't know Nick's probably not gonna have time to look at this tonight I'm gonna see him tomorrow <clears throat> but um, if he if he gets a chance to look at it then I'll chat, and uh, but I think you you know you're pretty close. Uh, one thing I want you to look at, I talked to your dad about, as Nick works back. Okay, See, this is this is the start of this is where keeping that flying wedge starts right here. Okay, he's essentially just going to carry. He's going to carry his impact position. All right, so there's impact, P7. He's just going to carry 7 to 8. There's no flipping going on. That's just big muscle rotation right there. So he's, he's, he's carrying 7 to 8. All right, so look at this. So here, here's your flying wedge. You can't see it, but I'll guarantee you his, his right wrist has still got bend in it. See, even there, look here. 
Look at that. All right, now let's look at you. Oh, see, it's gone. Look at your right wrist. Flat. It's almost concave or convex. Okay. Heck, your the toe of your club. You can't see it, but it's almost. Heck, it's almost pointing back to the left. Look at his. See, his is always going to be square or perpendicular to the plane. See, and then he's going to exit his shaft. Will exit pretty pretty close to parallel to his shoulders. See that? Pretty close. Pretty close. And there's that uh, pretentious stack and tilt finish. <laughs> See, look, where you, look at your exit angle. It's coming out of your neck. Right there. No spine tilt. Nick's still in his tilt. That long, long, uh, let me change colors here. This long blue line. I'm going to click him back to address. Boom. Right in his ear. Boom. 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 No humping going on there, my friend. And what's funny about Stack and Tilt, back in 07 when it came out in Golf Digest, everybody said that that's what they were teaching. They were teaching people to hump the shaft. Quite the opposite, my man. This is just what the good players have always done. So I want you to look at this, and I want you to at least reply, and, and let me know that you you viewed this. I know it's a, I'm kind of long winded here, but you you I mean if you if you want to get better, um, you know it's a shame. It I mean it's just a shame that you didn't make the golf team. You know, and maybe maybe that's not what you want to do. You know, I'm not. I don't want to push you. I know your dad doesn't want to push you, but it's a shame because you have talent, you have the skill, or you have the ability to ability to, to enhance your skill. Um, you know. So anyway, 